Hi, I'm Jeanette Smith and today we're going to talk about changing vineyard training systems. So there are a number of reasons why you might decide to change your training system after a few years, but uh, most of my clients are going to change theirs either because they need to accommodate high vigor capacity or because they need to reduce labor. Okay, so now when we lay out our vineyards, we try to choose a, a vine spacing and training system that matches our vine vigor capacity. And this is what we're trying to achieve once our vines are mature, right? The vigor capacity of these vines is well suited to our four foot uh, spacing and to our VSP training. And we know this because we have three or four pencil thick canes per shoot per excuse me per foot of canopy and the shoots meet the top of the trellis but they don't require excessive hedging we need to do very little pulling of laterals and our fruit ripens nicely with good color flavor and chemistry now when you see this kind of growth it's usually because the soil is too shallow or coarse or it lacks organic matter so in this situation, the vigor capacity is really too low for the vine spacing and training system that we've chosen. On the other hand, when you see this kind of growth, it's usually because the soil is very deep and fertile and holds a lot of moisture. The vigor capacity of these vines is too high for our four foot spacing and VSP training. So, how do we deal with these situations? Well, I'm going to come back to changing the training system to accommodate high vigor in just a minute, but first I want to talk a little bit about low vigor. Okay, so these vines were pruned to 13 buds, and as you can see, the vigor capacity won't support 13 good shoots. The fruit on these short shoots won't get ripe, and after a few years of this kind of pruning, these vines will just poop out and maybe die. So the first thing we want to do with these vines is balance prune them. All right, so here they are, balance pruned. We know that they're balanced because, once again, our shoot length is good, the thickness is good, and the fruit is ripe. But we've got large gaps in the trellis that are not making any money for us. So now what do we do? Well, we can interplant so that we now have a full trellis and we have two foot spacing between our vines. But in my experience, it's really hard to interplant when you've got an established vineyard. Sometimes it works, but a lot of times it doesn't. So uh, other solutions to interplanting would be we could add irrigation if we don't have irrigation or if we do have it we may choose to uh, irrigate more frequently or use more water on these vines that have uh, low vigor capacity. We could add compost and by doing this we're increasing the organic matter of the soil and the water holding capacity of the soil. We could add fertilizer to the vines to try to boost the vigor that way. Or we could widen our herbicide strip under the trellis and that way we are reducing the competition uh, from the sod and weeds uh, that will be competing with these vines and uh, encouraging low vigor capacity. So if we do these things for several years Hopefully, we'll have vines that are well uh, suited to their training system and, and, and uh, vine spacing. So, okay, now let's go back to high vigor vines. All right, so these vines were also pruned to 13 buds, and we end up with a lot of bullwood, a lot of shading, high pH fruit, high methyl pyrazines, poor fruit color, a great environment for powdery mildew, and a lot of work hedging, deleafing, and removing laterals. 
So let's balance prune these guys. Okay, so now they're balance pruned. There are more shoots, more fruit clusters, and no bullwood, but there's still a lot of shading and the fruit still has high pH and high methyl pyrazines and poor color and probably powdery mildew. So now what do we do? All right, so we can, once again, now we can try to reduce the vigor by either increasing the competition for water and nutrients by narrowing the herbicide strip, or we can plant cover crops underneath the trellis try to take some water and nutrients away that way, or we can just embrace our high vigor and try to spread it out. So one way of doing that is we can remove every other vine and spread out the vigor capacity for each vine, and we end up with eight foot spacing between vines. But we might decide that we don't want to do that. And so the alternative would be to divide the canopy vertically. Now there are several divided canopy training systems, but my favorite is a modified ballerina system that Chris Hill invented, uh, and he calls it the solar collector system. Chris Hill is another vineyard consultant in Virginia. And uh, what I love about the solar collector system is it's really user friendly and it's easy to convert a VSP trained uh, vine to a solar collector training system in just one growing season. And here's how you do it. Okay, so we're going to start by balance pruning our vine. And in this case, we've balance pruned it to 28 buds. Now as those shoots start to grow, we're going to let all 28 of them grow. And as they start to reach and just surpass that first pair of catch wires, I'm going to run my arm outside the catch wire on either the south or west facing side of the trellis and gently sweep the shoots away from the catch wire. So, if my, run, if my rows run north-south, I'm going to sweep the shoots to the west side. If my rows run east-west, I'm going to sweep the shoots to the south side. And I'm really not pushing the shoots down. I'm just trying to get their tendrils away from the catch wires. Now on the north side, of the, or the east side of the trellis, I'm going to tuck the shoots between the catch wires. And I do this uh, sweeping and tucking exercise once a week for about three weeks. Now that sounds like it may be a lot of work, but it really goes pretty quickly. And I can do it almost at a walking pace. After a few weeks of this sweeping and tucking, the weight of the fruit will help to pull these shoots on the south or west side downward. Now you're going to be hating life for a couple of weeks when the shoots are sticking out into the row middles, but just be patient because in a few more weeks this is what you're going to get. Plenty of beautiful fruit with good chemistry and well-balanced vines. So we've just gone from vines with shaded canopies and poor quality fruit to well exposed high quality fruit with our solar collector system. So okay, we've now accommodated this high vigor capacity situation, but I've had other clients who uh, need to reduce their labor costs in the vineyard. So. Back in the 90s, uh, Richard Smart uh, introduced a lot of us to horizontally divided canopies, such as the LIAR and GDC training systems. And these systems are perfectly designed for high vigor sites. They do accommodate that high vigor, but they tend to be pretty labor intensive 
because you have to crawl inside between these layers of uh, canopy and separate those layers, pull those shoots outward and keep them in two planes. And it, it just takes a lot of work. So I've had clients who just say, you know, I'm spending a ton of money on labor trying to separate these canopies and I'm, I'm having a rough time of it. So if we've got this situation and the vines are well balanced on a liar system, uh, we can convert it to my favorite divided system. You guessed it, the solar collector system. This conversion will take about two to three years and you're going to go through some awkward phases, but it can be done and the end result is worth it. Okay, so we're going to start out. The first step is to add a couple of pairs of catch wires. They're going to be up right up on the post. And I've indicated these new catch wires in red here. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to lop off one trunk on each vine to about 36 inches in height. And we're not going to lock, lop off um, both trunks in one year because we need to keep the vines in balance while we go through this conversion process. Now I prefer to lop alter alternate trunks so that we don't end up with a lopsided trellis. During the first growing season, we're going to get a bunch of suckers on our decapitated trunk. And that's a good thing. We want to keep at least four of them. And as they grow, we're going to tuck them between our new catch wires that we've installed on the post. I've indicated the suckers in dark green here. And then we've got the remains of our uh, liar system uh, trunk to, that's going to bear fruit for us and help keep this vine in balance. At the end of our first growing season, we remove the liar brackets and their associated wires and we're going to add two more pairs of wires to the post. The lowest pair of wires will be about 42 inches high and they are going to serve as parallel fruiting wires. Now at this point we can either remove the second trunk entirely and go to single trunking the vines or we can lop off the second trunk at 36 inches. Now let's assume we're going to go ahead and, and lop it off at 36 inches and continue double trunking these vines. So we're going to then take uh, our four suckers that we had and we're going to lay them down on our fruiting wires. And we're going to cut them back to three, or excuse me, five or six buds each. So each vine is now going to have between 20 and 24 buds. So here we are in the second growing season and we're going to train the shoots uh, on the east or north fruiting wire up between the catch wires and we're going to train the shoots on the west or south fruiting wire downward. And then we're also going to train four suckers up from our second decapitated trunk and we're going to tuck those between our new catch wires. And again, I've indicated those new suckers in darker green. Now after the first growing, or excuse me, the second growing season, we're going to use the canes from the second trunk on the west or south fruiting wire and we're going to extend the cordons on the east or north fruiting wire. In the third growing season, we're pretty much done with our conversion and we don't have to spend a bunch of labor separating our liar canopies, but we still are, are back in full production. So I know this looks like an advertisement for Chris Hill's solar collector system, but it's such a groovy solution to these problems that I think it has uh, a lot of merit. So if you have any questions, just feel free to email me. I hope this made sense to you. Thanks a lot for your attention. Bye.